Hi, my name is Maddie Sexton, and this is a little presentation about the flipped classroom. So, uh, sorry, I had a little difficulty getting the slides to change there really quick. Um, so, what is a flipped classroom? Um, by definition, it is a pedagogical model in which the typical lecture and homework elements of a course are reversed. But what does that really mean? So if we take the traditional classroom model, um, which would be a teacher providing information for their students in usually some kind of a direct instruction or a lecture type format, and then assigning readings or activities or exercises for homework for the students to complete outside of class, the flipped classroom just flips that on its head. So teachers, instead of being in charge of providing the information in class in a lecture-based format or something of that nature, um, are creating some kind of multimedia platform, usually in the form of some kind of video, for their students to watch outside of class um, and to bring their questions and uh, concerns into class where they can have some kind of discussion or participate in exercises related to the concept. So how is it done? Um, as I said, teachers would make short videos for the students to view outside of class um, and then they are able, the students are able to come to class with their questions. If they don't understand a certain topic, um, they can bring that to class instead of having to struggle with it um, during their homework session and maybe really not having a lot of time to discuss it in class because they're having to move on to the next subject. Uh, class time instead of moving on to the next subject is devoted to discussion or projects or exercises. So specifically with projects, a lot of times, um, at least for my own personal experience, those were things that were completed outside of class. Um, you know, when you were assigned a project, that was something that you had to do over the span of a couple days, but it was on your own time for the most part. Um, but with the flipped classroom style of teaching, you the students are allowed time, you know, to really specifically devote to their projects for a particular uh, content in class, which I think provides a lot more opportunity for them to get their questions answered and to really understand what they're doing. Um, so just to kind of dive in a little bit, what is the value of a flipped classroom or a flipped classroom? There are a lot of things that can be said about it, but one of the most prominent things to me is that students are able to stop, rewind, fast forward, or rewatch a video. Um, so when you think about when students are learning information in their classrooms from their teacher, normally they're you know just waiting for the important information that's being said and if they miss it they might not have enough time to write it down or um, there really isn't a way to go back and replay that but with a flipped classroom that's a definite possibility so if students are listening to a video or watching some kind of screencast and um, realize that they may have missed an important part of the video they're easily able to go back and rewatch it um, maybe rewatch the entire video or only a portion and that really allows them more accessibility with the information to make sure that they are indeed grasping the important material that is a part of the video. Um, it has been said that devoting class time to the application of concepts might give instructors a better opportunity to detect errors in thinking. So when instructors and teachers are taking that class time to hear their students' ideas about a particular concept, they're able to really dissect what they're thinking and what they're understanding and maybe what they're not understanding. So if there are errors in thinking or some issues with a particular part of the idea or concept, um, teachers are really able to effectively and immediately address those kind of issues without having to wait for homework to come in the next day and then you maybe you know not have enough time to really focus and devote to that particular issue. Um, continuing about the value, students are actively learning rather than sitting and listening to a lecture of some sort. And yes, there are plenty of ways and plenty of models that provide active engagement for students um, in the traditional style of classroom. But 
the flipped classroom model is just another way to get them more actively engaged in what they're learning since they're participating in activities and discussion in class rather than outside of class. Um, students create their own questions about a concept and consequently create their own knowledge. So when they are really taking part in that concept, they are, you know, they're having to make up questions to be able to participate in a discussion or something of that nature, which really helps them to more deeply understand what's going on. They can collaborate with each other in class instead of having to, you know, figure out some time outside of class to work with each other. Or even when they're having a discussion in class, the ability to collaborate with one another just, I, I believe, really provides some valuable knowledge that they wouldn't really get if they were working on it by themselves outside of class. And finally, um, teachers serve as facilitators and coaches in building their students' understanding. So if there is a discussion going on about some particular content area, the teachers are there you know, facilitating the discussion and coaching their students along in their understanding and not so much standing up and instructing them um, with the particular concept. But a flipped classroom is definitely not one size fits all. There is not one specific way that a flipped classroom can be done. Um, it really, I think, varies a lot with the content area or the, or the specific topic that um, is being taught currently. So the flipped classroom model for a math class may not be the same as social studies or science or language arts or something of that nature. Um, just depends on the particular thing that you are trying to accomplish and I think that it can be done effectively in each of those areas just in different ways. It may be a single video, it may be a succession of videos, maybe there is a particular topic that's um, particularly dense that teachers might want to make a succession of videos to get their students focused on smaller aspects and then the overall aspect in order to more deeply understand it. And um, they can be audio and then there's also an option uh, for to have a video with quizzes either embedded in the video or immediately following the video in order to provide that quick assessment at the end or during the video is while the video is playing. Those are just some of the examples of ways that it can be done. There are certainly other ways but just to emphasize the fact that there's not one specific way that it has to be done. There are some downsides as with anything. Um, the biggest one I think is that for teachers who are making these videos it is a very careful and um, considerable preparation that takes place with making them. It can be a large time commitment especially when you're first beginning so when you're not used to using maybe a screencasting software like the one I'm using right now or um, some other software that you're having to use to record the videos, it can take a lot of time to figure out how to use it and to construct your videos in a concise and effective manner in order for your uh, students to really understand what you're trying to get at and not waste a lot of time and thus losing their attention. Um, again, the careful integration of ideas in and out of class is going to be important, so deciding what to put on the video and deciding what to talk about in class would be an important thing to think about. And then also the access to internet or devices for students. So not every student is going to have access to internet at their house or maybe they don't even have a device that's going to allow them to access these kind of videos. So making sure to provide an equal opportunity for all of your students I think is a very um, important step in effectively um, applying this flipped classroom model. So in the end, the big so what, I think, and this is just a statement that I came up with, um, a flipped classroom can be an enormously effective teaching model if enough time is taken to effectively explain and prepare the videos and if the students buy into the idea. So if your students aren't very interested in that particular style of teaching, then you're probably not going to have much success with it. But if they buy into the idea and if they're excited about the videos and they, you know, are really learning some valuable information from this new model of teaching, then I think it can be incredibly effective. But that just depends on your content, the time you've taken to make the videos, the effectiveness of them, and really the way that your students are interacting with them. 
So there are just some ideas about a flipped classroom to kind of get started. This is one of the first times I've ever learned about it, but I think it's a really cool thing that I'm definitely going to try in my future as a teacher. Here's some of my references, and thank you very much for listening.